All right, what's up, guys? Twisty GFX here today. If the mic quality sounds bad on this one, because I'm using my webcam mic and not my headset. The headset broke, and so until I get a new mic, I guess you guys, I guess you guys have to deal with this one for now. So we're gonna go ahead and make a tutorial on how to make a nice, detailed, high-quality shield that'll look something around. Let's find something. Let's find something. Something that'll look of this sort. Made that for a friend. He runs a private server and also made this. Making some pretty high quality shields today. They're pretty good logos to use. But let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So basically, I'm going to put your width to around 500 and your height to around 400. So you got a decent amount of space to work with. Go ahead, go ahead and download a uh, shield brush if you guys don't already have one, which I already have one. If you guys don't know how to get a shield brush, just go on Google, look up Photoshop Shield Brushes Download. And I'm sure you'll find the ones I found. It took me 20 seconds to find them. So we're going to use a nice looking shield here. And let's go ahead and try out. It's a little too big. We're going to put our brush size down to around 315. And basically that's the size we want. Press the little black and white swatch and flip it over to the white side. Basically, you're gonna just keep clicking until it turns to a solid white like that. So that's a nice white we got right there. And basically, we're gonna go to right click the layer, go to our blending options, and this is where we're gonna work with the inside to make it look like an indent in the shield, and then we'll go on from there. So you can mess with multiple things like the inner shadow and all that good stuff. Turn the opacity down a bit just so you can see the crease right there. You don't want it to be like completely like black like that. So you want the opacity around 24. And go to your inner glow make that also black and put the screen on normal so it gives you the whole entire outline of the base of the shield and we're gonna put that on around 20 opacity we're gonna go to our bevel and emboss and you can either use your inner bevel or your outer bevel for this one we use the outer so you can see a crease around the shield for this part and basically you're gonna want that at around 103 depth you can mess around with your size, just make it look decent. I'm going to put my size at around 5. And go to your contour. And then you have a whole bunch of these to choose from. Basically, it's going to make the you know, indents in your shield. So basically, you can choose whatever you like. I'm typically going to use probably something less pixelated and just keep looking through them until you find the one that you like I think I might be liking this one right here it has a crease all the way around it so now we're getting the base that uh, metal part of a shield don't mess with the um, con texture but some like to mess with this so if you want to use it go ahead and put a texture on there it'll make it look a little bit better I suppose I'll just leave a texture on there you can mess with your gradient overlay to whatever you want, but for this tutorial, I'll be making a uh, steel feeling, like a steel shield. And we're gonna put our size down to one, opacity down to around 46. The color adds white. If you just want to mess with your opacity, feel free. I'm just gonna leave it at 50 and just leave it there. Oh, and by the way, this is what basically what you just made with all those colors you made. A gray indent with a steel uh, surrounding so that's basically giving it that steel surrounding to it go ahead and double click layer one and make it say base and then hold that layer make sure that layer is selected like that and press ctrl j I'm not sure what it is for max but for windows is ctrl j basically now you can start messing with more stuff in here and I'm gonna loosen it up a little bit to 33 you can mess with your inner glow if you want go to your uh, bevel and emboss go to your inner bevel and basically you can mess around with the stuff in here Te turn off the texture by the way this stuff's basically going to give you your colors put the depth at 1 leave your size right there that's fine put your size at 5 and leave it at soft and at 0 don't touch the angle and go to your um, basically what this is going to do it's going to give you that color right there that's going to give you that nice metal feeling. I'm going to go to normal instead of screen. You see what it does on the top of there. So do it right here. It's going to make it look more metal. And basically this is giving it that dark color. So basically we're going to change this color to a nice light gray. 
put it on normal. And we're gonna turn that up a little bit. And we're gonna put that around 95. You guys can once again still match it your color overlay, but I have something pretty nice in the end to add on to it. So you can mess with your um, gradient overlay if you guys like, but I typically just wouldn't use them. Because it's just not my cup of tea. So basically, you can go to normal and put your opacity at 22, which is fine, not too heavy, and go ahead and hit OK. And then basically, it gives you that. Go ahead and duplicate your base copy again, and you're gonna go ahead and take your select tool, press Control T, and you're gonna pull it down a little bit. And the reason I'm flying through this really fast is because this is not a beginner tutorial. This one's a little bit more advanced, so I'm expecting you guys to know the the hotkeys. So that's that. Basically, we're going to get that inside of the shit nice little end in like that. And right now, it looks like it's a piece of paper on top of another piece of paper. That's not what we're aiming for here. Basically, you're going to go to your inner shadow. That's going to give you that little end in again. So we're going to toughen that one up to around 40. We're going to go to your inner glow. And we're going to give that a nice 35. Go back to your bevel and emboss. And basically, it's gonna give you that nice little thick feeling right there. And the size, this is something negotiable. Now you see how it's starting to sink into the shield? That's what you're going for. You can either soften it if you want to. I typically just leave it softened so it looks like an indent in the shield. Now we're starting to get that form of a nice shield going. Now the contour is just gonna make it look like, it actually depends on whatever, whatever you're working with. So basically, now you're gonna wanna use something different that'll stand out much more. So basically, in my opinion, I do something that would make that right there look better. So I'm going to use this little weird looking hill thing. Go back to your color overlay. And this is something you guys can use to whatever you guys want. But as I said in the beginning, I'm going to stick something nice in there. So basically, let's give it a nice little light gray, which is the color code C1, C1, C1. The pattern overlay, you guys can leave it. The stroke. If you guys want something to be more noticeable, you can turn the stroke down to a black. Leave your size at 1 and you can turn your opacity down to around 20. So basically it's giving it a little thicker outline. I typically would just leave it there just so you can notice a little bit more. And hit OK. Basically we got that. And to get what I'm getting to. Alright guys, my bad. I'm back. Guess my dad walked in my room at the wrong time. So we're going to get back to this tutorial. Act like that never happened. So basically, you can find multiple fibers on Google. Just look up Photoshop Carbon Fibers. I typically found this one, it looks nice, it looks professional, it looks clean. It has that little carbon fiber feeling to it, is what I'm aiming for. Basically you're going to put that over your entire shield, like that. It'll cover your entire shield and you can't see it. Right click the uh, carbon fiber and create a clipping mask. Sometimes it won't show up because of the colors on your shield, but we can get it to show up. Just mess with your stuff, with your overlay, and basically you can, that's not going to work. Alright, so basically you can mess with it, go to your filters and try to sharpen it up a bit, which is not going to work also. If you guys have a carbon fiber that you guys like to use, and it won't work, it's more than likely because of the colors we added to the base. Let's check to see if that's the reason. Remove that color overlay, go back down here and grab our fiber, put it right back over the shield. And put it back over the shield again, and create a clipping mask, there we go, perfect. Now you guys see how it gives it that nice little texture to it. That could we could just leave it like that, but we're not going to do that because it's a little too strong. That right there looks a little bit better. And we're going to turn the opacity down to around 71. It's now gives us that nice little light gray feeling. It gives us that nice little iron feeling to the shield. So basically that's going to give us the base of the shield. And you guys can use this for your logos for your games, your websites, or whatever you want. So basically you got that done, so you go ahead and exit out of your resource folder, there's no need for it. And I get more into depth with this with the brush, but we're not really doing that today because I can add borders around the shield and indents. It's kind of self-explanatory to add all that stuff just because, you see how you guys get a nice little indent right here. I'll just give an example of what you could do. You can get a nice little brush that you have here. Plant it right there and then you can just mess with the sizes by holding Control T. And doing stuff like this. It would take a little bit of time to get it right and a lot of trial and error, but that's something that you're supposed to go through when creating designing and graphic designing, I mean. <clears throat> Excuse me. And basically, you can work with your shield, which is pretty simple to do. 
And if you, instead of doing like, instead of moving it every second, go to edit, transform, and flip vertical. Am I bad? Not that. Flip horizontal is what I meant to say. Flip it horizontal, and you can use it over here too. To get it placed right. And then basically you can use your other brushes for things like that. And just keep messing around with it. It's basically what you can just do. It's gonna it does rely on creativity in order to do this. It's not something you can just throw together within minutes. It's gonna plant another one down there. And we want to arc it to the point where it looks like it's gonna connect with each other. So I guess we can leave that part right there and right there. It's gonna require a lot of erasing like that and then really erasing stuff like that right there. And once again stuff right there too. You just gotta get it to look right and basically you can get the out basis of your shield with the brush. So for the sake of the time being in this video, we're going to go ahead and stop right here. So basically you got yourself a nice little HD render. You can add more to it like you can add your pen tools, go ahead and create a new layer. Make your little line right here, it's all straight, kind of. Stroke your path, pencil, there you go, and I got a nice little line. Go ahead and take your anchor tool, and basically, if you want to make it look faded, go ahead and just toughen up the um, blending option so you can actually see the image right there, and then filter it. Alright guys, before you watch in again, I'm going to go ahead and just end the video right here. You guys can add whatever else you guys feel like is necessary to this image. Basically, you can get a high quality shield, and it's pretty basic in order how to save it, save as, save as PNG. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and drop a like and subscribe, and I'll try to make a video every few days. See you guys later.